Oi Belta Loda, welcome for making space. Is it a wang video? Me am gonna fall show to do for create wa silly dimensional asteroid belta. To kang fly through using bearer that included effects for alpha effects. For those who don't watch The Expanse, then you really should, it's awesome. And a big chunk of its appeal for me is the accuracy with which they portray the solar system, and specifically asteroids. There are about 1.5 million rocks spread out in a ring or belt between Mars and Jupiter. The total mass of all the asteroids adds up to about 3% of our moon. Ceres is the largest rock, big enough to be a dwarf planet, and that accounts for 39% of the mass of the belt, but it's still only 950 kilometers wide. The history of the belt is still being written, but it starts in 1595. Johannes Kepler predicted that there must be a planet between Mars and Jupiter because the gap observed by Tycho Brahe was too big. In 1766, Johann Daniel Titius spotted a mathematical relationship between the planets which became known as the titius bode law. When Herschel discovered Uranus in 1781, it matched this law, which had suggested there should be a planet in that space. On January 1, 1801, Giuseppe Piazzi spotted a tiny object in the predicted location. He initially thought it was a comet, but it didn't have a tail. So he concluded it was a planet and named it Ceres, after the Roman goddess of the harvest. Fifteen months later, Heinrich Olbers discovered a named Pallas. To quote Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Space is big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the road to the chemist, but that's just peanuts to space. Ceres and Pallas were just points of light to even the strongest telescopes. They looked just like stars, except they moved across the sky way faster. In 1802, Herschel suggested that instead of calling these bodies planets, we should coin a new term, asteroids. And I'm sure it had nothing to do with thinking that these new discoveries might overshadow his Uranus. Herschel wasn't exactly popular though, and people kept referring to them as planets. It wasn't until 20 odd years after his death that the term asteroids caught on. And that was mainly due to new discoveries. It became cumbersome. Oh, one last footnote. In 1846, Neptune was discovered, which broke the titius bode law, so that rule was discredited. So Piazzi and Albers had been looking in the right place for the wrong reasons. That good is for YouTube chapters, am I right? For everyone who skipped the tasting history knockoff, I'm going to use CC Particle World to create a backdrop of particles. This is tricky because CC Particle World struggles to have particles occupy the same space. Older particles always appear behind, but if an older particle is close to the camera, it breaks the 3D illusion. I'm then going to use Cinema 4D Lite to create a close-up asteroid so that we get the best of both worlds. Let's get started. Here I am in After Effects usual 1080p comp. And for those of you familiar with my work, first thing I'm going to do is go to Layer, New, Null Object. Make it 3D and make sure it's called Null 1. Now, duplicate this layer twice. Name the first one Rotation. Then hit P to expose the position properties and set the X value to something like 20,000. This is going to be the center of orbit for our asteroid belt. When you've done that, name the second null to position. And make it a child of rotation. So position is in our field of view, but if I use the rotation controls on the rotation null, you can see it flies around in a massive circle. To link null 1 to position, use this expression. I'm borrowing from one of my earlier tutorials here. We're going to link CC Particle World to this null, and by linking it to these others, we get to control its position. So, let's go to Layer, New, Solid. Make sure it's comp sized and hit OK. Name it Rocks. Then I'm using a preset I made in another earlier tutorial which is CC Particle World linked to a null. Tutorial is in the description below, it covers linking CC Particle World's producers to this null. Now go to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control. Name it Rocks Amount. And set it to 10. Then use the Particle World's Birth Rate Pick Whip to link to the Rocks Amount slider. This gives us an easy to access slider to given the amount of rocks we create. Trouble is, CC Particle World's birth rate isn't directly connected to an understandable value, and 10 is too high. Edit the expression and add a divide by 100 after the slider value. Now 
Expand the producer section and we have to set the radiuses to zero. If we give CC Particle World any sort of range, then the particles can overlap. Now let's animate the rotation null. Select that null and hit R to expose the rotation controls. And at zero seconds, set the Y rotation to minus 45 degrees. And at five seconds in, set it to plus three. Because the newest particles are in front, we need to generate our particles from the back towards the camera. We can't really see what's going on. In CC Particle World, set the longevity to 100. Expand physics and set velocity and gravity to zero. In particles, set the type to shaded sphere and up the max opacity. And go to Layer, New, Camera, and use the Orbit tools to move around. So we've got a very organized flat line. Not exactly random distribution, is it? Expand the Position Nulls Position Properties, and hold Alt to click on the stopwatch. And in the Expressions area, type X equals, wiggle, brackets 15, 400, close brackets, square brackets, zero, semicolon, new line, y equals wiggle brackets 15, 400, close brackets, square brackets, one, semicolon, new line, z equals value, square brackets, two, semicolon, new line, square brackets, x, y, z, close square brackets. Wiggle is a really clever expression that knows what property it is being applied to, in this case a three-dimensional one. So wiggle doesn't generate a random value, it generates an array of three random values. We want the X and Y to be random, but not the Z. Incidentally, there is a more efficient way to write this, but I thought it best to show you what's going on. And taking a look, that's better. And from the top, yeah, each particle is in its own Z plane. And that's the trick. Thanks for watching. Yeah, you probably want me to show you the texturing and the C4D bit too. Using the rocks amount slider, set a keyframe at 0 seconds for 10. And then right click to set a hold keyframe. And then jump to 5 seconds. And now, use the page down key to move back a few frames and set a new keyframe to 0. We're going to stop generating the 2D rocks in the foreground so that we have space to add the 3D ones. For the texture, and because this is a simulation, I want to use something real world to help sell the effect. I found this craggy rocks texture on the royalty free site Pixabay. Make a new comp, 400 by 400 pixels, and set the duration to just 30 frames. Add in the texture. It's way bigger, but that's okay. Expand the transform properties, and set a keyframe at zero, positioning the texture with its top left corner. Then at 10 frames, set a new keyframe for the texture to have moved over so that the top right corner is visible. Alt click on the position properties stopwatch and type loop out brackets quotes cycle end quotes comma two close brackets. So the position property will now constantly fly from left to right. Then set a keyframe for the anchor property. Move one frame after the keyframe you set and drag on the Y value until you can see the middle indicator. Right click on the keyframe indicator and convert it to a hold keyframe. Jump to 20 frames on the timeline and set a new keyframe so that the bottom of the image is visible. And scrubbing through the timeline, we now have 30 images on 30 frames. Not exactly rock shaped though. Create a new solid, Make sure it's white and place it above the texture. And using the elliptical mask tool, draw a circle. You can hold shift to keep the circle perfect and control will center the mask, but we're going to affect the shape quite a bit, so it's up to you. Now, go to effect, distort, turbulent displace. Set the amount to 80 and set the size to 110 and the complexity to five. Hold Alt and click on the Evolution stopwatch and type time times 1000. Soloing the layer and previewing it shows that we get a load of cool shapes. And yes, I know I said in my Galaxy tutorial you couldn't get random shapes, but I'm making this shit up as I go along. Now go to Effect, Distort, Rough and Edges. And set the border to 20. 
unsolo the layer and use the track mat option to set the texture to use it as an alpha mat. And looking through it, we have a load of random rocks. Back in the main comp, add this comp in the bottom and turn it off. Then go to layer, time, enable time remapping. And then alt click on the new stopwatch and use the loop out expression again. And drag the layer length until it is at least five seconds long. Back on the particle layer, in particle, select textured disk as the type. And expand texture and choose the texture comp. Set the texture time to birth. Now in other situations, I could have just added the layer straight here and used the scatter option to randomly select an area of the texture for each particle. But I wanted the rough shapes and there's something more I'm going to add later. Set the rotation speed and initial rotation to zero. Normally I quite like having a bit of randomness from this, but the thing I'm going to add later is a fake shadow, so I'm forced to keep the rocks all in one angle. Set the birth and death sizes to 0.7. the size variation to 100%. Expand opacity map and using the select tool, fill it all in. We don't want the rocks fading in over time. And set the birth and death colors to white. We don't want them tinting the particles. Okay, getting there. Let's add that fake shadow. Back in the texture comp, select the solid and go to effect, generate, checkerboard. Turn the solid back on, set the width to 500 and the color to black. And the blending mode to multiply and drag up the Y value until we have a half black solid. and then drag this effect above Turbulent Displace. And back in the main comp, we now have really strong shadows. If you don't want the light source coming from the left, then all you need to do is rotate the solid layer to line up. And just comparing the two comps with and without the layer, it's funny how much difference the shadow makes for depth perception. Okay, make sure the rocks layer is selected and either hold Control and tap D or go to Edit, Duplicate. On the bottom rocks layer, hit enter and rename it Dust. Clear the rocks amount keyframes and set a new hold keyframe at 0 to 30. And at 5 seconds, set it to 0. In CC Particle World, expand producer and set X and Y radiuses to 0 0.3. In Particle, change the type to Faded Sphere, set the birth and death sizes to 3, and the max opacity to 7%, and set a dirty grey for the birth and death colours. Duplicate this layer, rename it Specs, and drag it above rocks. In particle, set the birth and death sizes to 0 0.05, and the max opacity to 50%. Now, you might get some of these specs looking funky because they're meant to be behind rocks in front of them. So expand extras, then depth Q, and set the type to fade, and the distance to one. That should do it. I think it looks pretty good on its own. Do you like it? If only there was some way you could demonstrate that you'd like my tutorial, sharing that you'd liked my tutorial with others, and subscribing to the feeling of liking something on YouTube. Did, did that work? Depending on the shot you're after, you might not want to bother adding 3D rocks in the foreground, but I'll show you how next. Go to File, New, Maxon Cinema 4D File. You'll be prompted to save your file and then C4D eventually opens. Go to Create, Primitive, Landscape. In the Attributes Manager, check the spherical checkbox. And you can mess with the dimension settings and scale until you get a shape you're happy with. When you're happy, go to Window, Content Browser, and in Light, 
materials, stone. I found this plaster material. Double click to add it to your materials panel and then you can close the content browser. Drag the material onto your landscape and use the render preview to see what we've got. Okay, it's okay. For the shot at the start, I actually used a collection of rocks from an old Maxon CD-ROM. I know, right? It was called Instant Space. It was released in 1998, and while still at copyright, none of the files open in C4D Lite R22. Jim Scott and Creative Cows Forums kindly opened and resaved the rocks for me. You need a version of the full program newer than R11.5, but older than R20. I did think I'd just share them with you, but copyright is a scary thing. If you can find a copy of Instant Space, then you'd still need to convert the models, and to be honest, they are pretty basic. There's not a lot of good free options out there, but it might be worth exploring one of the many 3D scanner apps and actually scanning a rock or two from your backyard. I'm going to explore these myself, but if there's one you think is good, let me know in the comments below. For now though, let's add a light, go to Create, Light, Infinite Light, and drag it off to the side. In the Attributes Manager, set the shadow type to Hard Shadows. When you're happy with the look, you can go ahead and make some copies of the rock, change its size and shape, and distribute them randomly in space. When you're done, go to Edit, Project Settings, and back in the Attribute Manager, set the maximum time to match your AE comp and make sure the frame rate matches too. Save your project and close C4D. Back in After Effects, drag the C4D file into your comp, and in the Cineware settings, set the renderer to current, and set the camera to centered comp camera. My light isn't lined up, so select the C4D light in the project bin, and then go to Edit, Edit Original. C4D light reopens, and yeah, I need to move it off in the X direction, not the Z one. and it's not really pointing at the asteroid. So in the object manager, right click on the light and in animation tags, choose target and drag the landscape object into the target box. There we go. Back in After Effects, I added a tritone effect to match the colors to the rocky texture. In my finished version, I added my preset for a 360 star field. It's not the best rock, but I was limited by C4D lights options which makes this my last intended tutorial with C4D Lite, I'm afraid. There's just too many features they've deliberately removed from the Lite version. You cannot edit polygons properly because Maxon removed the knife tool. Maxon removed the ability to create layer shaders. You can still use them, you just can't create them. And they took out the ability to use a 3D mouse. These aren't big features. I don't mind that character animation, particle simulation, and MoGraph aren't included, but the tools I mentioned are fundamental to 3D software and I find trying to use C4D Lite without them just too frustrating. So I'm done. I'm still gonna use 3D in my projects and it will still be using free tools. I'm looking at Blender and Unity and I'll be publishing a whole new series of tutorials showing how to use them with After Effects. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Making.